Good evening to our cherished listeners and greetings from EDUSA Accra. It is Thursday and you have just tuned into your favorite program, I believe, the EDUSA Weekly Facebook Live. My name is Benisa Fute. I'm an Education USA advisor at the US Embassy. I'm here with my colleague, Mrs. Marilyn Owusu, the senior advisor in the Kumasi Center at ACE Consult, and also our guest for tonight, Mr. Brandon Mark. He's the Associate Director of International Admissions at Rice University. We've taken you all the way to the south or southern part of the United States. If this is the first time you're joining us, I'm sure you would wonder what EdUSA is. Education USA, that's the full name, is the official network of the US Department of State. And our mandate is to provide comprehensive and accurate information on higher education in the United States. We guide you through five steps in order to enable you study at a university in the US. If you go to our website, educationusa.state.gov, you will have a lot more information. Tonight, Mr. Brandon Mark, is going to talk to you about Rice University and also discuss the topic, shaping your career through the liberal arts education. As he goes on with the presentation, kindly type your questions in the chat box. Once he's done with the two presentations on Rice and how to shape your career through the liberal arts education, we will have a Q and A session we will read out your questions and answer them appropriately. At this time, I'm handing over to Mr. Brandon Mack and I wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, Bernice. And thank you, Marilyn and everyone at Education USA. Uh, it is an honor to be here. Once again, my name is Brandon Mack. I'm an Associate Director of Admission and very proud alum of Rice University located in the beautiful city of Houston, Texas. So we are going down to the south of the United States of America for this presentation. So what I'm gonna do being an admission officer, I'm gonna first talk about my home institution first, and then afterwards, we're gonna talk and expand more about educational opportunities in the United States, focusing, specific, focusing specifically on the liberal arts. But first, we're gonna talk a little bit about Rice University located in the beautiful city of Houston, Texas. So Rice was founded in 1912 by William Marsh Rice. He was a merchant who came to the Houston area in order to establish his fortune. And he decided that he wanted to create an institution of higher education that would be dedicated to the belief that anyone who would come to Rice would leave with no upper limit in terms of their potential. So over hundred years later, that is still the fundamental guiding principle of Rice University. All students have no upper limit and they can utilize all that Rice has to offer to achieve their ultimate dreams, goals, and ambitions through unconventional wisdom. So at Rice, we believe in academic freedom and flexibility, and we wanna give our students all the choices in terms of how they structure their education. One of the ways that we demonstrate that is in the fact that Rice does not have a traditional core curriculum. So there are no mandatory classes where every single student must take in order to graduate. In the spirit of providing a liberal arts education, what we do is something called flexible distribution requirements. We ask our students to take three classes from the School of Humanities, three from the School of Social Sciences, and then three of the Applied Sciences, which is Natural Science or Engineering. You then decide what classes you want to take to satisfy those requirements. So it gives you the ability to cater to your interests and to cater to your skill set. So for example, me, I hate math. I hate math with a fire of a thousand suns. So because of that, I was able to structure all my natural science and engineering classes to not have any math in it. So we really do give you that freedom and flexibility to learn what you wanna learn in the way you wanna learn it at Rice. What we believe in is academic freedom and flexibility. So we wanna give our students all the choices in terms of how they structure their education. What I like to call Rice is that we're a comprehensive research university with liberal arts attitude. 
And what I mean by that is that you get the very best of both worlds, the very best of a major research university combined with the very best elements of a of liberal arts college. So we really do give you that freedom to really choose and to focus on what it is that you wanna study and get out of your educational experience. We offer seven academic schools of study. Within those seven different schools, you have access to over 50 majors and 23 different minors. When you apply to Rice, you indicate what school fits your interest the best, but you're not locked into that decision. You also get to pick up to three academic interests from among all of our offerings, and we will use that information to evaluate your application with respect to those particular contexts. But when you're admitted to the university, you are admitted to Rice University, which means you then have the freedom and flexibility to switch schools. You can even double, triple major across different schools of study and take classes offered from any of our schools. Our schools include the George R. Brown School of Engineering, which is one of the top schools of engineering in the United States. We're currently ranked number one by Paysco Magazine for being the best return investment school of engineering, which means that our students come to Rice, get an excellent engineering education, and then go on to top jobs in every single field of engineering. We have our own design kitchen called the Oshman Engineering Design Kitchen. It's a space devoted to engineering students to have all the equipment and assistance necessary to design and create your own unique engineering projects. One of our personal favorites is a group of students created their own laboratory in, the back, in a backpack, where they took everything you would find in a regular lab, they shrunk it down to size so that anybody could have a lab on the go. And the Peace Corps bought 25,000 of those labs in a backpack. We also have a Center for Engineering Leadership. It'll teach you skills you can apply to any engineering field. And we offer internship and study abroad opportunities to all of our engineers. The Weiss School of Natural Sciences is one of the leading natural science schools in the world. We're actually among the top 10 for having the most impactful natural science research. We offer multiple biology majors. Our chemistry department is the birthplace and home of nanotechnology, where two of our professors received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the finding of carbon-60. And we have one of the leading institutes of nanotechnology on our campus. Our astronomy and astrophysics students have enjoyed a relationship with NASA for well over 50 years. The School of Humanities is the largest school. It offers the most undergraduate majors and the most faculty. In that school, you'll find our English department, which has a variety of different literary focuses, including a focus on creative writing. Our visual and dramatic arts department has three concentrations, studio art, film, and theater, and we offer 11 different foreign languages for study through our Center for the Study of Languages. The School of Social Sciences is the most popular school at Rice. It's home to our most popular major, economics. Our economics department is world renowned for emphasis in government, health, and financial economics. We have a top 10 political science department, the number one sports management program, and our psychology department has its own dedicated undergraduate psychology lab. It's a space where you can perform your own experiments including experiments on your fellow Rice students. So we always say, be nice to your roommate. The Shepherd School of Music, our conservatory style school of music is dedicated to any student interested in becoming a classically trained musician. So if you have a love of music and wanna take private lessons with a professor or instructor or take classes in music history or music composition, the Shepherd School of Music is still available to you without having to be a music major. We have one of the top five schools of architecture in the United States. Our architecture program is a six-year program where during the course of those six years, you earn two degrees. At the end of the fourth year, you receive the Bachelor of Arts in Architecture degree. And during the fifth year, you go to work for a major architectural firm doing a preceptorship internship. That internship is paid for the entire year and can take place anywhere in the world. Then you return to Rice for your sixth and final year, or you spend a semester at the Rice School of Architecture in Paris and then graduate with the professional Bachelor of Architecture degree. The seventh and final school is the Jones Graduate School of Business. The Jones School is currently the number one business incubator school in the country. It is responsible for creating more startup businesses than any other business school. They operate all of our undergraduate business programs and also are home to a top Masters of Business Association program. We also offer at the undergraduate level, pre-medicine, pre-law and pre-business. Rice is very proud to say that we currently have a 90% acceptance rate in the medical school and a 90 to 95% acceptance rate into law school and business school. So a Rice University education will prepare you for whatever you wanna do in your life. 
We also encourage our students to engage in experiential learning through research, internships, and study abroad. Every single undergraduate student has the opportunity to have all three of those experiences during their time at Rice University. When it comes to research, we offer over 45 research centers that are on campus. They are all interdisciplinary and about two thirds of our undergraduate students will conduct research during their time at Rice. When it comes to internships, we offer internships in the city of Houston, in the state of Texas and all around the world through our Career Development Center across all career professions. 90% of our students will do at least one internship during their undergraduate years. And then when it comes to study abroad, we offer over 150 programs in study abroad. We have sent students to every single continent, including Antarctica. So when I say we don't limit you, we truly don't limit you as a Rice University student. We want you to have the fullest educational experience possible. We are a small collaborative communal environment where students help each other do their very best inside the classroom as well as outside the classroom. And the faculty and staff foster a sense of community that, you're find, that you will find on our campus. We currently have an undergraduate population of about 4,000 students. The median class size is 15. The student to faculty ratio is six to one. So that means you get to know your professors very well in very small classes. In fact, we often don't close classes due to low enrollment at Rice. So if you are the only student signed up for that class, it will likely still happen. That just means you got to show up, do your work, and get to know your professor extremely well because you cannot hide in a one-person class. It just can't happen. In terms of who teaches you, about 84% of our classes are taught by faculty. You're taught by world-renowned faculty who are at the top of their fields, who are equally devoted to cutting-edge research and quality undergraduate teaching. About 5% of our classes are taught by graduate students. The remaining percentage is taught by visiting professors and professionals. We have doctors, lawyers, zoologists, world-famous rappers also teach classes at Rice University. And then students also have the opportunity and ability to be the professor of their own class. And they get to choose what they wanna to teach to their fellow Rice students. We've had student taught classes ranging from Lady Gaga and her cultural influence, philosophy and the Simpsons, and Star Wars through math. So we really do encourage you to impart your own knowledge and your own love of learning to your fellow Rice students. Rice is consistently regarded as one of the happiest universities in the United States. And just this year, we were once again ranked number one for the best quality of life by the Princeton Review. The reason why we're ranked so highly is because we believe in balance. We want you to have excellent academics, but a lot of fun while you're pursuing your, st your studies. The cornerstone of our student life experience is our unique housing system. It's called the residential college system. I like to refer to it as Harry Potter on steroids, because instead of being sorted by a sorting hat, no one is sorted. You're randomly assigned to one of the 11 residential colleges on our campus. It is where you live when you live on campus. Even if you don't live on campus, you're still affiliated with your residential college. Now they're all equal in terms of the standard of living, but they all differ in that every single residential college will have its own colors, traditions, symbols, special events, chants for your college, and against the other colleges because you grow and come to believe that your college is the best one on campus. So Weiss College, which is my college, is the best one at Rice University and no one can tell me any different. They're all great, but Weiss will always be the best in my opinion. One of the other great things about the random nature of the colleges, because everyone is randomly assigned, every college is a microcosm of the university, meaning the same diversity you see all around Rice University you're gonna see within your residential college. And we're very proud to say that Rice University is without a doubt one of the most diverse universities in the United States. For the last six years consecutively, we've been ranked number one by the Princeton Review for lots of race and class interaction among any university in the United States. And we are also currently the number two most international university in the United States with 55 countries represented in our undergraduate population. So when you're a part of the Rice community, you're part of a diverse group of students from all different backgrounds, all united together by being both Rice Owls as well as through the residential college system. We also like to have a lot of fun. So to that end, we offer over 285 student organizations and clubs that range from anything and everything. We put on about 20 to 30 theatrical shows in a given year. We have 12 different student governments. 
80% of our students are involved in community service, various arts and music organizations, including five different acapella groups. We also play sports at three different levels. Varsity, which is National NCAA Division I, which is the highest level. We're the very proud Rice Owls, and we play as a part of Conference USA. We offer seven varsity sports for men, seven for women. We also offer over 30 club sports, which let you travel and compete against other club teams. And then over 30 intramural sports that range from the traditional baseball, basketball, volleyball, tennis, and soccer, to some more unique and interesting sports, such as inner tube water polo, college trivia, Quidditch, dodgeball, esports, and the most popular intramural sport on our campus, powder puff football, where girls get out of the field and everyone else acts as cheerleaders and the coaches. We're also deeply committed to our students, so we offer numerous support services for specific populations on our campus. Our Office of Multicultural Affairs assists students from all underrepresented backgrounds. We also have a specific office devoted to international students and scholars that help our international students with transitioning to Rice University, as well as supporting them throughout their time and beyond at Rice. And then we also offer well-being and counseling centers. So we are very well supportive of our students from an academic, but also a social and an emotional background as well. And we are situated in the fourth largest city in the United States, Houston, Texas, home to Beyonce and yes, Rice's information. So we have a lot of wonderful things for you to do while you're a Rice University student. One of the ways that we connect you to all the amazing things that the city of Houston has to offer is we give all of our students a passport to Houston. This gives all of our students free access to the entire metro system. So you have free access to every single bus and every single light rail. You also have free or discounted admission to opera, ballet, symphony performances, professional theater events, movie theaters, and professional sports team games, because we want you to have access to everything that Houston has to offer by just simply being a Rice student. And we are located in the city of Houston on a gorgeous 300 acre campus surrounded by trees. And you're right across the street from the world's largest medical center and 10 minutes away from downtown Houston. We are also one of the best values in higher education because we're deeply committed to our students and our families. We want you to come to Rice, receive an excellent education and for it not to be a financial burden. So we do meet 100% of demonstrated need for all students admitted to the university. And that is inclusive of international students. So in meeting 100% of your need, what we will do is if your family has a need, we're gonna fulfill it. We fulfill it primarily through need-based financial aid, but we also offer merit-based scholarships. And all students who apply for undergraduate admission will automatically be considered for all of our merit-based scholarships. So it's very affordable to attend Rice University. And so having amazing student life coupled with amazing academics translates into success for our students. And our students go on to do amazing things in their lives. Once again, we have about a 90% acceptance rate into medical school and a 90 to 95% acceptance rate into law school and business school. So once again, a Rice University education will prepare you for whatever you wanna do in your life. So of course, the way to get to Rice University or any other college or university is through the admission process. So when it comes to undergraduate admission to Rice University, um, what you need to know is that we offer two primary ways for you to apply early decision and regular decision. My advice to you is that if you know Rice University is without a doubt your number one first choice school, we highly recommend that you apply for early decision. Keep in mind that early decision is a binding decision. So what does that mean? If you apply for early decision and you get accepted, welcome to Rice. You, uh, we, you must accept the offer of admission, go back to all the other schools you applied to and simply break their hearts. Let them know that you're gonna to come to Rice and that you wanna withdraw your application for admission. So you only apply to one school for early decision and that one school should be your number one first choice school. That deadline is November 1st of your senior year. Regular decision gives you the opportunity and ability to compare all of your different admission offers equally. That deadline is January 1st of your senior year. In terms of what you submit, you submit the following. An application, we have two application methods. You only need to pick one method. It could be the common application or the coalition application. Through those methods, you'll find the Rice Writing Supplement. 
This will give specific questions we use in our admission process. $75 non-refundable application fee. If the fee is gonna to prove to be a burden for you and your family, you can email us at admission at rice.edu and request a fee waiver and we will submit it on your behalf. For standardized testing for the 2020-2021 application cycle, Rice University is test optional. So we do not require the SAT or the ACT for admission consideration. If you want to submit testing, you're welcome to do so. But once again, it is completely optional. Uh, and then uh, the traditionally, traditionally, we do require the SAT or the ACT. But once again, for the 2020-2021 application cycle, we are test optional. We also require letters of recommendation. You'll submit one letter from your counselor or your head of school, and then two letters from teachers. We generally recommend teachers who are similar to what you want to study when you go to college. So let's say you want to go into a natural science or engineering based subject, we would recommend math or science based teachers to write your letters. If you have had less than two years of English as your primary language of instruction during high school, then you will be required to submit a test of English proficiency. That can be the IELTS, the TOEFL, or the Duolingo test. But once again, if you've had more than two full years of English as your primary language of instruction, then you do not have to do a test of English proficiency. We do require an international student financial statement with supporting banking documents to be submitted. And then the interview is optional. To request an interview, you must be an applicant, which means you must submit the application and Rice Writing Supplement to then request an interview, but it is optional. For students who are interested in our School of Music, you'll have to conduct an audition. And then for those students who are interested in our School of Architecture, you will have to submit a portfolio. That is 10 images that you feel best demonstrates your creativity. Now, once again, this is the timeline for the admission process at the undergraduate level. If you're once again interested in early decision, that deadline is November 1st. Regular decision is January 1st. The, uh, if you're interested in graduate admission, you'll want to contact the individual academic departments because they handle their own admission. Now, once again, we do meet 100% of demonstrated need for all students admitted to the university, and that is inclusive of our international students. To apply for need-based aid, you must submit the CSS profile and your family's most recent IRS tax information. I mean, sorry, the CSS profile and our Rice International Student Financial Statement, which you will gain access to after you apply for admission. Now, when it comes to our admission decisions, Rice University operates on a holistic admission process, so there are no numerical requirements for admission. We don't have a required GPA, nor do we have a required test score. It's a combination of all of your factors that will lead you to admission. So you want to make sure that you put time and attention to every single element of the application. Utilize every opportunity to talk about yourself, your interests, what you specifically will bring to Rice University, because all of it will be important in making the ultimate admission decision and will also be used for our merit-based scholarships because everyone is automatically considered for every single merit-based scholarship. So we can award a scholarship based off of the information in your application. So once again, that's why you wanna be as detailed as possible. That one detail you thought wasn't that important could actually be the detail that makes you a standout at least to you receiving one of our scholarships. And our merit scholarships range from $3,000 per year to full tuition for all four years. And once again, there's no separate application. So for a merit scholarship, all you have to do is apply to Rice University. So in case you want to contact us, you can feel free to reach out to us at admission at rice.edu. Our essay prompts are also available for you to start drafting those essay responses and you can follow us on social media. We're available through Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So now I wanna transition into the main, to the larger topic that we're talking about this evening, which is about liberal arts education and educational opportunities in the United States. In the United States, there are literally currently about 4,000 
degree granting institutions, and they range in a variety of different types, but they all offer both breadth and depth in terms of their education. When we talk about the liberal arts, what we mean by that is that you will have a broad-based education where you're getting instruction and education in a variety of different subjects ranging from uh, engineering, natural sciences, humanities, and social sciences. So it gives you a very broad-based education and you can utilize all those skills in whatever job or career that you wanna go into. But we wanna talk about the different educational opportunities that you could have in studying in the United States and the different educational philosophies that might make them different. So first let's talk about community colleges. So community colleges are two-year schools that primarily provide affordable and post-secondary educational options as a way to earning a four-year degree. So many students will utilize a community college for their first two years to get that introductory education. And then it is with the, um, it is with the idea that they would then transfer to a four-year institution to complete their bachelor's degree. So at community colleges, the highest degree that you can attain is an associate's degree. They are open access to post-secondary education, which means that they are open to the individuals who are in that community and are open to individuals who would like to take advantage of the opportunities at that community college. It is once again, preparation for transfer to a four-year college or university, but also at community colleges, you'll get many opportunities to do workforce development and skills training and a range of non-credit programs such as English as a second language and as well as certificate programs. So this will be where if you're interested in let's say welding or cosmetology, these could be some great opportunities to develop those skills that would then lead to direct job training. So public and private institutions are the two biggest categories in terms of educational opportunities in the United States. Public institutions are institutions that were developed for the residents of the, that particular state within the United States. So you see pictured here, the University of Texas at Austin, which is primarily set up for the residents of the state of Texas. As a result of that, there's a difference in terms of how much tuition or money is assessed to students in order to attend that institution. Because these institutions are primarily set up for the residents of that particular state, those individuals are given in-state tuition, which is often a lower tuition price because it is the revenues and the monies generated from the taxes and other revenue within that state. So that's the reason why it is at a lower rate because the money that's being used to finance an institution is coming for, from the people within that state. So if you are an international student or live outside of that particular state, you will then be assessed an out-of-state tuition, which is often higher. What you're gonna find with respect to admission is that for many of our public institutions, admission is gonna be more formulaic or fixed, meaning that they're gonna have very set criteria in order to be admitted into that particular institution. So for example, for individuals within a particular state, they may state that you have to be a certain class rank in order to be automatically admitted into that college or university, or that you might have a specific SAT or ACT score in order to gain automatic admission into that institution. But also these institutions will also offer you the opportunity and ability to apply and they can admit you through a holistic review as well. Now, private institutions such as Rice University, we are open to any student from any environment because we dictate what goes on within our institutions and we are set up for our own unique educational experience. So for this, tuition is fixed for everyone. So whether you live within that state or outside that state, you're gonna be assessed the same fixed tuition. Private institutions also have various different educational philosophies. So for example, some may be liberal arts minded, which means that they want you to have that very broad based education. Some may be more focused on research. Some may have a core curriculum where every single student is gonna take the exact same courses and then they'll focus on whatever their major or other um, curriculum that they really wanna focus on or they may be more open curriculum where you decide ultimately what it is that you wanna take 
and are not having to do a prescriptive um, core curriculum. And then a place like Rice University, we're a hybrid of the two. What we do is once again, flexible distribution requirements where you're the one who decides what it is that you wanna to take to satisfy those requirements, but we wanna make sure that you have that broad-based liberal arts education where you're studying the applied sciences, humanities, and social sciences. And also for private institutions, because they get to dictate the composition of their schools, the admission process is generally more holistic. So keep those things in mind. So liberal arts colleges are typically gonna be focusing on a well-rounded education. So they wanna make sure that you have that broad-based understanding of both the sciences as well as humanities and social sciences so you can apply all those skills and all those education and all that education into any field that you go into. So for example, if you're someone who wants to go into business, you can easily go into business with a history education or an ancient Mediterranean civilizations education because you're getting that broad-based education where you can utilize those skills and understanding people to be translated into what field that you want to go into. Uh, typically for liberal arts colleges, they're going to have smaller enrollments. So for example, the institution that you see here is Amherst College, which is a relatively small a school, the emphasis is going to be on undergraduate teaching and undergraduate education. So they're primarily going to offer up to the bachelor's degree at liberal arts colleges. The focus is going to be on teaching and conveying that understanding that the professor or the instructor has to the students. But keep in mind, even at a liberal arts college, you can do research as well. So don't think that if you go to a liberal arts college that you won't have research opportunities many liberal arts colleges do offer the opportunity to do research and some even make research a requirement. But once again, their primary focus is on teaching and developing individuals who have a very well-rounded based education. And then there are research universities. So for example, I like to once again call Rice University a combination research university with liberal arts attitude. So our focus is that we produce research, but we also want individuals to have that very broad-based education to where they can go into any field because they have a broad understanding of all different subjects. But at research universities, the focus is gonna be on research and producing new knowledge. Typically, research universities tend to be larger in enrollment because they have both undergraduate and graduate students. At research universities, you're you're gonna have uh, more programs that are on both the gra uh, undergraduate and graduate level, but the graduate level, they can go from a master's degree all the way up to a PhD or other graduate degrees, such as the, G the JD or Juris Doctorate, which is for law school. And then some may even have medical schools attached where you can get a medical doctorate. Um, at these institutions, you will be taught by professors, but also because they're teaching the next faculty members, you may, be, uh, you may be taught by a teaching assistant who is a graduate student trying to become a professor. But once again, you can get a liberal arts education even within a research university, because it all goes back to, once again, what is that particular institution's educational philosophy and their approach to educating their students? So many of the schools you see listed here, such as Caltech, uh, Johns Hopkins, Rice, Princeton University, you will get a broad base education and you have the ability also to do research with the professors at that, at that institution. So some things to think about when it comes to thinking about all of your different educational opportunities that are out there. First and foremost, what is the size of the institution that you wanna be at? Some people prefer to be at smaller institutions. Some people prefer to be at larger institutions. It really is once again about what kind of experience do you wanna have? Do you wanna be in a class where potentially it's only you and maybe three to four other students, which means you really are getting to know each other and also having that really close one-on-one -on -one engagement with a professor? Or would you prefer to be in a larger environment where the professor is is teaching to 100 students and you're interacting and engaging with a larger community. Once again, it's about that educational philosophy. 
the liberal arts educational philosophy is that they want you to get a very broad based education to where all those skills that you're learning from sciences, from humanities, from social sciences, you can see the connections, but also the separateness of those different subjects, but apply all that knowledge into any industry. So every single year, we have engineering students who are also engaging in English and engineering students who are also engaging in anthropology and bringing all of those different things that they learn from English and anthropology into the field of engineering. That's that liberal arts mindset where we want you to take all those different elements from all those different subjects and bringing it into a discipline. Or would you prefer to be in an environment that is more focused where you're in a school of engineering and you're only focusing on engineering and math and science-based classes, and you're not having to take classes outside of that particular discipline. And then think about the unique experiences that you wanna have during your time in higher education. Higher education isn't only about academics, it's about the full experience. So do you wanna to go to an institution that has a Greek life to where you can be a part of a fraternity and sorority? Do you wanna to go to an institution that's going to give you study abroad opportunities so you can go and learn about other cultures? Do you want to go to a place where you can conduct research so that you can really think about and delve deeply into a subject that you're really passionate about? So think about all those different educational experiences that you want to get during your higher education years and then find an institution that's going to allow you the opportunity and ability to engage in all those different experiences. And then the environment. Do you want to be in a hot or warm environment in terms of weather? Do you want to be in an environment that is very, very diverse or one that is more uh, homogenous? So, for example, in the United States of America, we have historically Black colleges and universities where they are built for the education of the African-American and African diaspora. So if you want to be in an institution that's primarily going to be composed of people from African and African-American backgrounds, you may want to look into an HBCU. So that's the reason why it's important to consider the environment that is being fostered within that institution. And then finally, financial aid. You want to go to a place that is going to be affordable. So ask those questions related to financial aid. Do they provide financial aid for international students? Do they provide a differentiation in tuition between in-state and out-of-state like they do at the public institutions? Do they offer merit scholarships? So all those different things you should ask and consider when it comes to going to an institution that's gonna meet you and your family's financial needs. So at this point, we're gonna open up the floor to any questions and uh, to any questions, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, also, I want to provide my information in case you ever have any questions about higher education in the United States, both for Rice University, as well as what we offer in the United States. You can always feel free to contact me directly as well. Wow. Thank you so much, Brandon. Viewers. I'm sure you have learned so, so, so much. You are so loaded with information. Brandon, we're grateful. So we have quite some questions here. Because Excellent. of time, we will just zoom into the Q&A. So somebody is asking if RICE is test optional. I know so, you mentioned some of these things, sure. but sometimes they, they don't join right at the start. So. Not a problem, not a problem. So once again, for the this year, for the 2020-2021 application cycle, Rice University is test optional. So you're not required to submit an SAT or an ACT for admission consideration. If you would like to, you're welcome to do so, but I don't want you to feel pressure to have to take an SAT or an ACT this year, especially in light of the global pandemic. So please, if you want to apply, feel free to apply and you don't have to submit testing for this year. And then, thank you. Another question is on whether you will require English test from Ghanaian students since we speak English and learn in English. Sure, so given the fact that uh, Ghanaian students learn in English, we don't require a test of English proficiency. We would only require that if you end up attending an institution, I mean, a high, a, a high school where you are primarily learning in a different language. Great, thank you. There's another question here. What must I do to get a full scholarship to Rice University? 
<laughs> Great question. So the number one thing that you have to do, and remember, we operate on a holistic basis. So that means that we look and consider everything in your application. So the number one thing that you need to do is to make sure that you're as detailed as possible. Utilize every single opportunity. Talk about what you specifically are going to bring to Rice, why you want to come to Rice University. What are those extracurricular things that you do in and outside the classroom? And remember, we're not looking for one specific thing. We're looking for everything. So that's the reason for why you want to be as detailed as possible, because it's going to be the combination of all those details that'll get you admitted, but could also get you a scholarship. Thank you. How easy or difficult is it for your international students to get jobs after they graduate from Rice? Great question, because we got to be concerned about getting jobs, right? <laughs> so international students have an excellent track record of getting employment after graduating from Rice University. Reason being is because you have a lot of opportunities. So students have the opportunity to do internships as international students during their time at Rice. And as I mentioned, about 90% of our students will do at least one internship. So right there, they're already getting a lot of great job skills and training to prepare to go into whatever industry that they wanna go into. As a Rice student, you would have access to our Career Development Center. We do three job fairs every single year, one in the fall, one in the spring, and one specifically for summer opportunities. We actually have our own version of LinkedIn for the Rice community called the mm -hmm. Sally Portal. So right there, you also get connected connection to all of the different alumnus and alumni at Rice University. So that also is a great resource right there. So needless to say, our job placement rate is very high amongst our international students and among Rice University overall. And then, as I mentioned, about 35% of our students continue on their education into graduate school as well. Great, thank you. I think we had a question about <laughs> Percentage of students who get opportunity to do internships. I think this also answered that. So I'll skip sure. that um, and I'll give you time to take a little break. Um, <laughs> back to our listeners, if you have just tuned in, this is the EdUSA Facebook Live session. Um, we have two offices in Ghana, one in Kumasi, housed in um, Top Martins Martin. Complex in Asukwa. Um, and then the one, uh, the center in Accra is at the U.S. Embassy. Um, every week we do this, we host a school, you learn about the school, you learn about an admissions topic. Today we're looking at how you can shape your career with a liberal arts education. We are also learning about Rice University. Um, Mr. Brandon Mark mm -hmm. is the Associate Director of International Admissions at Rice. He's given us a lot of information, shared a lot of wonderful inside info. So if you missed the presentation, you can still go back to the Facebook page and watch the video. You will have a lot of info to help you um, in your decision-making process regarding your education. Uh -huh. We are continuing with the Q&A. So Brandon, somebody is asking, you mentioned that you have merit scholarship that we don't have to apply separately for. Uh -huh. Can you combine some of these scholarships to get more money? So yes, so you can combine the need-based financial aid along with the merit-based scholarships in terms of um, getting that type of financial aid package from Rice University. Um, that can also be true for other colleges and universities in the United States where you can combine uh, need-based and merit-based aid, but also some schools may offer you multiple merit scholarships. Great. And you mentioned about the RISE passport. Somebody is asking, do students pay somehow to enjoy the benefits of the RISE passports? Sure. So you're talking specifically about our passport to Houston. So you automatically get the passport to Houston by being a Rice student. So you don't have to pay anything extra. So as far as that goes, you would automatically have free access to every single bus and every single light rail in the city of Houston. You would also get free access to the Museum of Fine Arts, 
Houston Zoo and Museum of Natural Sciences, and then free or discount admission to opera, ballet, symphony performances, professional theater events, movie theaters, and professional sports team games. Because once again, we want you to experience everything that the city of Houston has to offer, and we want it to be affordable. Great. I feel like I need I need the Houston passports right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is an amazing city. It's, it's, it's home for me, so I absolutely love my city. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question here. How does a request for fee waiver affect my application? So the thing is, is that you will want to email us directly because we will um, submit the uh, fee waiver request on your behalf. Uh, so once again, we understand that that could be a financial burden. So you will just want to make sure that you contact us so that way we can at least put that in. Great. There's another question here. How safe is RICE for international students? Sure. RICE is a very, very safe and welcoming mm -hmm. campus. We've always been welcoming of our international students from around the world, which is the reason for why we're the second most international university in the United States. So it is a safe and welcoming environment. The university itself is surrounded by hedges. So we're kind of hidden in a sense. Uh, and we also have an amazing blue light system where in case you ever have any issues, you can always feel free to contact use that phone and it will automatically get you assistance. So you are in one of the safest environments on our campus, but also in one of the safest parts of the city of Houston. So you as an international student will be welcomed and very safe at Rice. Great. So there's another question here. It's on the CSS profile. Uh -huh. It says, will I be penalized if I request a fee waiver for the CSS profile? So you will not be penalized because the financial aid, so we do make our decisions need aware, but in order for you to be given a financial aid package, you'll have to submit the CSS profile, but I won't have access to that information when evaluating your application. So keep that in mind that you won't be penalized in the admission process without uh, by not submitting the CSS profile or submitting a waiver. And keep in mind that the only way to be able to ensure that you get a full financial aid package, you will have to submit that. So we are need aware. The main thing that we need for the need aware admission process is the international student financial statement. So that's the number one thing that we'll need. As far as the CSS profile, you'll absolutely have to submit that to get a need based financial aid package. Great. Okay. So there's also a question here about fit. What kind of students fit in well or thrive at RICE? And what kind of students that do RICE look to admit kind sure. of look? Sure, in terms of the students that I feel that really thrive at RICE University, these are gonna be students who are intellectually curious. They want to be in an environment that fosters curiosity and that allows them to really study and focus on what they wanna do people who want to be in an interdisciplinary environment because we really do want students to see the connections to all the different things that they're studying. Students who want to be in an environment that is very, very diverse because we very much are, we're very proud of our diversity and we want students who want to engage and share their different experiences with each other because that's also a part of education is that we all bring all of ourselves into the education space. So people who want to share with each other would also thrive. Now, in terms of what we're looking for, we're not looking for one specific type of student because you all bring something different. So really that's the reason why it's important that you put all of yourself into an application process because the institution is looking for you. So that's the reason why I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, focus on one thing or the other, because trust me, you all are gonna bring the smarts. Everyone always brings the education and the smarts to the, to the table. It's those other things that we wanna see that you bring. Nice. Okay. Um, will the results of the US election have any effect on international admissions? Not at all. And especially for students. Not at all. Don't worry about that orange menace. <laughs> okay. Um, 
There's a question here on OPT. We've heard of international students doing optional practical training, getting in trouble. How does Rice University protect their international students? So the way that we protect our international students is once again, we have specific support systems for our international students called the Office of International Students and Scholars. They help our international students in terms of their visas, in terms of getting you know, work protections and things of that nature. And then also the university is protective of our international students. We've been a sanctuary campus for as long as I can remember, we've always had a mandate that we are going to be supportive and protective of our international students. So honestly, I wouldn't, I would, I would, what I mean by this is that honestly, when you become a student at Rice University, you're going to be supported by the institution and the university community. So you wouldn't have anything to worry about. Okay. Do I have a greater advantage if I attend a liberal arts education? So once again, it's about what it is that you want to get out of your educational experience. For me personally, I would say that I find a liberal arts education very helpful because once again, you can transfer those skills into any type of job and any type of environment that you want to go into. So for example, me. I work in college admissions. There really isn't necessarily like a school that you go to for college admissions. What you learn is you take the skills that you've learned from your experiences and your education and put it into this field. So me, I studied political science and sociology. That mm -hmm. gave me an education on how to think about politics, how politics impacts the world, how society and groups impact each other and the importance of different, of different societal factors. So the importance of race, the importance of gender, the importance of religion, and how that informs who we are as people. So I bring all of that into the field of college admissions and I'm able to maneuver in this career because I have that great understanding. It's the same thing that you can do with liberal arts education. You take all the different things that you have learned and put it into your industry and you make it better because you have all those different understandings. That's a great illustration. Thank you. Um, another question here. If a student gets, it's kind of, it's, it's some way. If a student <laughs> gets admitted to an institution now and mm -hmm. starts online classes, mm -hmm. what will happen if he or she doesn't get a visa to go to the US to continue with their classes on campus? Sure. So we do understand, especially with the global pandemic, that, mm -hmm. you know, some of these issues will happen. So we work with our students to, you know, help them with their visa issues, but also to make sure they can maintain their education. So in the United States, many institutions are offering the opportunity for our international students to do their classes remotely until they're able to resolve those uh, visa issues and then be able to attend on campus. So that's the thing that we've done with our international students who weren't able to start the fall semester with us because of various, you know, different visa issues. So they're doing their classes remotely, but once, you know, their visas come through, then they're able to start, uh, start with us uh, the next semester. Okay, thank you. Um, that's a follow-up question on visa. Sure. Will students with spring admissions be allowed to get visas this year? I think I'll take that one. Mm -hmm. um, the embassy is still in telework posture, means that we're working largely, we're largely working from home. Um, the office is closed to the public at this time. But if you have your I-20s and you're ready to go, I encourage you to start the process. You need to go to the embassy's website and review the application information. You need to pay your fees and do all of those things, book a date. Um, don't wait till you have information yes. that the embassy is opening today or tomorrow because you will never know when. So if you have the documents to get you started, please go ahead and start the process. You need to pay your service fee, it takes time. So begin the process now. Thank you. Um, there's another question here on 
the application interview, this time not a visa interview. Mm -hmm. So I turn it over to you, Brandon. Sure. If a student does not request an interview and yet needs full funding, what happens to him or her? So the interview, and I mean this full, 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 fully, it is completely optional. So the interview will not dictate if you get full funding or not. It is gonna be the combination of everything. If you have an interview, great. But if you don't have an interview, you're still gonna get the same fullest consideration and you're not gonna be disadvantaged in terms of funding or the admission process. So please, it is optional. So don't worry about the interview. The main thing you have to worry about is what is in your control. The application is in your control. So definitely put your focus on that because that is in your control. Great. We'll do like two more questions sure. and then we will wrap up. So there's a question here. How welcoming is Rice University to international students? So as I mentioned, we are extremely welcoming to international students. That's the reason why our population of international students is as large and as diverse as it is. Uh, we have 55 countries represented in our undergraduate population. And the reason being is because we are very, very welcoming and we help our international students. Okay, um, last but not the least. I'm sorry. I just flipped the questions. If I did business in high school mm -hmm. and I have science, so they do integrated science and they do math, but I did business, will I, do you think I will be able to get admitted to an engineering program at Rice? Yes, because we, we do understand that you have to make those choices very early on in your education and don't necessarily have the maneuverability to be able to switch. So that's the reason why we do a very contextual analysis of your application within your particular school context, but also with respect to what it is that you wanna study. So remember, you still have the ability to do other things that demonstrate that you're really interested in going into engineering, and I will still make you a competitive engineering applicant. Mm. Great. We can go on and on and on, but because of time, I think we will close down the curtain here. So yeah, so once again, what I just want to reiterate is that for any student who has any questions, you can feel free to contact us at Rice University through admission at rice.edu. I hope this has been very, very helpful and I look forward to hearing from you and wish you all the best luck. And the last thing I'll leave you with is don't limit yourself. The only way you're ever gonna know if a college or university is an option for you is you got to apply. So definitely put forth that best application and give yourself all those opportunities because you deserve it. Okay, sorry. I think I had a little bit of a challenge. Brandon, we want to wrap up here. If you have any final words for your listeners. So I think I just gave some final uh, words. So uh, they should hope have I'm that. I'm sorry. Hopefully. I think I, I had, I froze a bit. Okay, listeners, thank you very much for staying with us and apologies for the technical hitches. Um, same time next week, we will be live. We will give you more information in the coming days about um, the remaining weeks in the year concerning how our Facebook live sessions will go. Thank you again for staying with us all this time. Have a wonderful evening. And thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Okay.